All right, let's get started. Um, this is a joint presentation uh, with Tesora and Codership. Uh, my name is Sakari Keskitalo, and I'm working for the Codership, the developers and experts of, of Galera Cluster. So what is Galera Cluster? Galera Cluster provides MySQL high availability and scalability. We provide 24-7 service and application availability. There is no data loss, uh, no transaction loss. There is no single point of failure in a Galera cluster. You can scale up easily in Galera cluster by adding more and more nodes. You can get more performance and, and scale for the future. Galera cluster is so-called active-active multi-master cluster, meaning that you can read and write from any of the databases. And we guarantee that you have an identical copy of database each time. It is based on synchronous replication. We can provide uh, elasticity that the cloud needs. You can scale in, you can scale out. You can add new Galera nodes on the fly, and provisioning is automatic. Galera works in uh, LAN, in, in private networks, and it works in wide area networks, and it works in the cloud. This has been implemented hundreds of times uh, in the cloud already. We can say that Galera is the most popular OpenStack infrastructure high availability solution. To prove this fact, I have just, uh, we have recent a uh, survey from the OpenStack community which says that Galera has been used a lot in, in, with the MySQL, with the MariaDB, and with the Percona, which is another uh, variant of, of Galera cluster. 35% altogether of MySQL users or MariaDB users or Percona users are using Galera cluster for their Keystone, Nova, Neutron metadata. We are very excited about the latest bro uh, development uh, uh, in OpenStack. Galera cluster now uh, is being supported by Tro. Our friends at the Tesora, HP, and Red Hat has been contributing a lot to this, and now we can fire up Galera clusters with the Tro. And uh, with that, I would like to introduce Doug Shelley from the Tesora to show you some, some uh, interesting demonstration. How do you actually do uh, fire up uh, Galera cluster uh, with Throw? Doug? Thank you, sorry. Hi, everybody. Um, as he said, I'm Doug Shelley. I'm VP of product development at <laughs> Tesora. And so what I want to talk about specifically is the work that's been done recently to integrate Galera Cluster into Trove. So I know many of you are probably, as Sakari talked about, um, running Galera Cluster under your OpenStack infrastructure database, which provides you with all the benefits he talked about. What we've done recently is brought those benefits into the database as a service component of OpenStack, and that's what I'm going to talk about. So I wanted to just kind of start out and level set with everybody on what Trove is to make sure we're all on the same page. So as I said, this is database as a service for OpenStack. So it does um, provisioning, so you can launch new database instances. Uh, and I think right now we support about 13 different database types, uh, NoSQL, cross NoSQL, and, and SQL databases. Um, as we're going to show today, it supports some complex da uh, database um, technologies, uh, topologies, such as clustering, which I'm going to show you, and replication. There's lots of automation within the, the um, project. So it supports backup and restore. There's failover and resize cluster sizing mechanisms. Um, and as I mentioned, multiple database uh, technologies. Um, and there's a management interface. So I'm going to demonstrate uh, the um, Horizon dashboard for you today with the clustering. Um, but I'm also going to show you the CLI so you can kind of get a sense for what that API for Galera clusters looks like. So just a little more details on this. So the intention here isn't, this isn't provisioning as a database as a service. This is um, provisioning and lifecycle management. So th you kind of, the, the entire cycle here, right? So you can do provisioning as I talked about. Then there's security things, right? So part of the provisioning is that, you know, there's like, 
you know, users and permissions can be managed. There's like, you know, root access can be restricted. Um, there's also ways to tune the databases when they're running. So log there's log file management. There's um, the configuration group feature allows you to um, set database specific parameters in a way that makes sense. Um, and then there's management. I mean, you can manage databases and schemas. And then we talked about you can set up replication, high availability, um, and you can back up and restore these databases. So over the last few years, really evolved the Trove project to truly support multiple data stores. Um, and the architecture supports this. So some of the data stores we, um, we support are, are, are on the right there. So the control plane, which is the, in the middle there, API task manager and conductor, is generally database agnostic. The database specific code is in a, in a guest agent that basically represents a specific type of database and runs kind of next to the database engine to you know, do the provisioning and lifecycle management as you'd expect. And as I mentioned, we also are part of the uh, Horizon project. So there's a dashboard for uh, the database project that shows up when you have it enabled. And you can do all the uh, management provisioning via the UI. So this is kind of a little bit of a, a deeper dive into the architecture I just wanted to touch on a bit. So uh, basically, Trove is a consumer of many OpenStack services. So it kind of sits on top of them. It actually hits them through the public REST endpoints. So for example, um, when you go to provision a, a new database instance, you basically come in. You see the blue dot there. You come into the Trove API, and you basically hit the Create API. And what it basically does is tells Nova to boot a particular image out of the glance storage into, into a Nova instance. It attaches a cinder volume to it, provisions that for where the database of the particular data store is going to end up. Um, you know, Neutron's involved in that the, you, you can basically put the database on a tenant-specific network if you want. Uh, and then when it's running, you see there on the left, Trove Guest Agent. That's the piece of code I talked about that is data, database-specific. And then on the instance is obviously the actual database software and the storage where the um, data lives. And then once all that's done, you hit, you hit the database with your application coming in through the database native API. Trove is not in the middle of the, uh, the access between that, your application and the database. Okay. So I want to jump right into clustering, because that's kind of part why Sakari invited me here today. So just a glimpse at some of the, the, the command line interface for clustering, right? And this is de designed to be data store agnostic, like everything else. So I'm going to do a demonstration where I bring up a Galera cluster, but we also support clustering for uh, Cassandra, Couchbase, Mongo, Redis, uh, Percona Extra DB cluster, which is also Galera. <laughs> um, so, uh, so it's basically uh, the API is intended to span all these different data store types and provision them in a proper way. So first thing you would do, you want to bring up a cluster. You just do trove cluster create. And then you tell it a name, a cluster. And you say, I want a MariaDB 10.1. And then you basically can, the API allows you to specify some specifics about your cluster. Like, I want to use flavor 100, which you know that's a flavor that would specify the vCPUs and RAM. Um, and the volume is how big you want the data volume to be that it's going to attach. And you can basically for initial provisioning, provide as many of those as you want. That'll go off and spin up a cluster, uh, say, with three nodes if I put three instance parameters on it. Once it's up, you can do trove list and tell it you want to see the clustered instances. It'll dump you out a list of the, the, the three instances that you just provisioned. And then some interesting commands here. So uh, Sakari talked about um, scaling your cluster, uh, scaling out and scaling in. So that's basically mapped into our uh, Trove Cluster Grow and Trove Cluster Shrink APIs. So basically, on a running cluster, you can say Trove Cluster Grow, your cluster name, and give it a list of instances. In this case, I'm going to grow this cluster by one instance. So now I have, say, four instances in my cluster. And similarly, you can shrink it. So you just do Trove Cluster Shrink, uh, you give it the name, and you target that UUID is the, is the ID of an instance, and it'll basically knock that instance out of the cluster. So that's kind of how this looks from the command line interface. So I just wanted to do a quick demo here. Uh, let me just, yeah. Can I come up? OK. So 
This is Horizon with uh, the nice Tesora theme on it, <laughs> as you can see. So I'm just going to sign in here. OK, so we're going to go. You, you should recognize this. looks like every other Horizon demo, I'm sure. So we're going to go into the panel there. You see uh, data, uh, the databases panel. I'm going to just show you some things here. So you're going to see that So Trove has this concept of data stores and data store versions. So this represents the database types that you, you want to control. And ultimately, part of the, the uh, configuration of this is that the data store version maps uh, down to a glance image ID. So that, that's how it knows what image to boot on the Nova instance. So you can see it. Oh, well, that's the, let me just back that up. This is a video, because it's a lot easier to do than a live demo. <laughs> OK. So one, of the, so one of the value adds that Tesora provides as part of our uh, Enterprise Edition DBAS platform is we, we basically create images for you that you get as part of the product. And we basically uh, test them and certify them, right? Um, you can certainly create your own images, but this is one of the value adds that we provide. So this, in this demo, this Maria uh, image is, our, is our, the one we ship. So let's just go ahead here. We're going to go over to the clusters panel. So this, this would be a list of running clusters in your tenant. I don't have any at the moment. So we're going to just go here and see. You can see we're going to launch, push the launch cluster button. So it's going to come up with this panel, which um, basically should look. It, it's asking for similar information that I showed you that was in the command line interface, right? So we're going to give it a name. Look how fast I type. <laughs> we're going to pick a data store. now. There's not anything significant about there's two there other than I was you know, doing some testing. But basically, the, the, I just loaded two different versions of the data, the data store in because I was also testing this new feature we have that, uh, that, that allows you to upgrade a running instance. So uh, that's why there's two there. But I'm going to just pick this Maria 10.1. I'm going to pick a flavor, tiny. I'm going to say I want a one gig volume. Now, this is another new feature that's kind of going into the project. Um, the ability to specify hypervisor affinity. So you can basically tell it whether you want, whether you, wh whether you care about affinity, and if you do, whether you want it to be the cluster to be built out on one hypervisor, or you want the cluster to span hypervisors. So that's that. And then you basically pick the number of instances. Now at this point in the UI, this we're, we're specifically ha causing it to launch a um, homogeneous cluster. So you noticed in the CLI, you could actually you know, say, I want this flavor, th this instance. In certain clusters, that just doesn't make any sense. So it's basically been abstracted such that you're just saying, I want three nodes. They're all going to end up being with a one gig volume, and they're all trove tiny. What were the options for the Affinity, anti-affinity, or I don't care. <laughs> that of our product? One seven. Actually, that's a very good question. So right now, um, the, the question was, what version is all this stuff in? This demo is on Tesora 1.8, which is actually in development right now. And that's because the Maria Galera uh, work is in our 1.8 version, which is going to ship in a few weeks. Um, the upstream work for Galera was with Maria was done in Mataka. So it's, it's in the Mataka release. It will be. We're in the process of pushing all that upstream now. The, the question was, is the affinity anti-affinity in the upstream? Not in Mataka. It will be in Newton. OK, let me just go on here. So basically, I filled in all the things I want, a three-node cluster. I'm going to push Launch. And here we go. It's launching. So you can see it says it launched it. It's in the process of building. Um, you got that. Nice blue bar there going. So there now you can see that it's basically done building. It's up. Okay. So this cluster at this point, you could connect to it with your application and do stuff to it. Add, you know, put data in it. So I'm going to um, show you, drill into it. If you click on the cluster, it's basically a show command. So you can see, 
that it tells you the, an IP address you can connect to. At this moment, we're not provisioning any load balancer on top of this. That's certainly been discussed, but that's not, not in this uh, version at the moment. So it's basically picking one of the instances and says, you, you know, go, here's, a, here's an instance IP. It gives you a connection example from the MySQL command line. And then we can click on the Instances tab, and it's going to show us a list of the instances. So there's the three instances that spun up. Those are, those are Nova instances running MariaDB with Galera configured. You can see all the IPs and stuff like that. OK. Now we're going to, now let's scale it. So to scale it, you'll see on the right-hand side, there's a drop-down. We're going to hit Grow. And it's going to pop up a panel here that we're basically going to add instances to. So similar to launch, you're filling in you know, the flavor and the size you want. You give it a name. The instance type and, in, and related to um, fields that popped up there, there, I believe those, uh, some clusters are heterogeneous, like Mongo. So those fields are actually more relevant to Mongo, and I guess we didn't pull them out of the Maria panel, but they're not relevant to Maria. Um, okay, so we're going to fill this in, and we're going to hit Add. And you basically hit Add as many times as you want to grow, uh, you know, how many instances you want to add to this cluster, and then when you're done, you just hit Grow, and it'll go off and um, add whatever you put in there. So I added one node, so we're going to go off. So now it's basically doing a build-out with adding that um, new Nova instance into the cluster and um, reconfiguring the cluster to now four instances. OK, so now that's there. It's done. You can see now there's four instances. And the a IP information is the same. So now we're going to shrink it. And again, there's a, in the drop-down, you just pick, pick shrink. It's going to pop up and ask us, who do we want to get rid of? So we're just going to click on somebody, and there, we're going to shrink out num member three. So it'll go into a build state, like shrink, uh, shrink cluster, and then when it's, see it says shrinking cluster, and then when it's done, we'll see that that instance is gone. That's a good question. Is the, I don't know the answer. Is it what, when it's doing grow and shrink, is it usable? I'm not sure. Come to our booth <laughs> later on to be before. The oh, uh, put the non-techie guy <laughs> in the spot. <laughs> That's a good question, Matt. <laughs> okay, so we now um, it's done the shrink, and you can see now there's three instances in it. And I'll just go in there and show you. There's three now. So it blew away the one that I picked. So I think that's. I can't. Oh no! One last thing. You can delete it, the whole thing. You can just shoot the whole cluster. So I'm going to just show you that now. So on the drop down, there's a, there's a delete cluster. In true cloud form, this little cattle pets thing, right? So we don't like this cluster anymore. We just shoot it. <coughs> so it's going to do delete, go into a build state, and it'll be gone. So I can, I had a minute 20. I can take questions, and then, then we can talk offline. So one other thing. Uh, Galera's booth is over here. Do you know the number? B, B for uh, 18. And we're in A26 over there to Sora. Stop by. We're here for another two hours, I guess, right? <laughs> no. Mac, there was a question of max scale. MariaDB is working on a max scale and uh, Galera uh, working together. So it's pretty good, in a pretty good shape at the moment. And uh, you can use max scale with Galera itself. So. What kind of configuration management do we use to grow and shrink clusters? Uh, it's it's the, the built into Trove, right? So uh, you're saying, you, are we using like Ansible or Puppet or something? No. Yeah. So the, that's the uh, role of the guest agent, right? So that so when we spin up the instances, they have a little bit of Python code on them that knows how to talk Maria in this case, and that's what's being communicated with from our control plane, and it's poking it and saying do this or whatever, right? Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.